guys and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Thieves Horde. It's a game for two to seven players, two to eight players, ages 13 and up, and it is by Brass Engine Games. In Thieves Horde, you're gonna outsmart, outbid, and outthieve your opponents. And how you're gonna do that is by getting $10,000 worth of artifacts. You're gonna be thieving from different museums and whatnot, as well as from your opponents. There's a bidding phase in the game in which players are going to basically be bidding with their prestige as to who's gonna get what artifacts and when they're popping out. And then there's a master or a lead thief character that is going to get a chance to try and steal from their opponents, as well as buy more Thieves Horde cards. These are cards that you can play during during your turn, during other players' turns, to kind of muff them up a bit. Uh, your objective, of course, is to get $10,000 worth of artifacts, but you have to have that by the time the lead thief token passes to the next player. If you can do that, you're gonna win the game of Thieves' Horde. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the game. So here we have the game Thieves' Horde and everything included, along with a setup for two players, but it's best with more players, in my opinion. You're going to be getting five of these Thieves' Horde cards. These are basically your instants that are going to occur throughout the game that you can play whenever you would like, and they're gonna have an ability on them and a symbol that explains the ability along with the name. On the bottom right is going to be used for the thieving phase of the game. If players want to fight against each other, that is what's going to be used from the deck over here. Every player is going to get three prestige to start with. They're just going to have little hands with ones on them. A random artifact. These are all basically just the, these don't matter at all. It's just the, the, the flavor text, basically the artwork, the name, and then it is the cost of the artifact. So what, 2,000, everybody's going to start with one at 2,000. And then of course, it's going to be the prestige value you get every turn and it's going to be the heat value you get when you pick one of these up. You're also going to get a phase card or a player reference card that's got a front and a back that explains how the game works. An alias card that is going to change the game a little bit for you. In this case, I've got Selena's uh, kite here. And on this side over here, I've got Azarek Azaria. I hope I said that right. And they all have their own unique abilities as well for the game. And then you got the Thieves uh, main master thief card or lead thief card. It starts with the first player of the game. Pretty much all you're going to get, but quite a lot actually to start the game off with. There's the rule book and of course the box that you already previously saw. I went ahead and set the aliases and the extra heat cards, which you won't be using along with the extra round and phases card aside for the game. You'll have the ones, the fives, and the tens as far as prestige go, along with the artifact deck that you're going to go ahead and make sure you shuffle up pretty good. And uh, you're going to set that face down just like that. The Thieves' Horde will also be shuffled and set like this as well. Then the beginning of the game will go, and you can go ahead and actually look at the round of phases card, and it says everyone gains prestige equal to the total artifacts or, um, uh, that they have. In this case, he's got three and he's got three, so they can take three. Now, they can take it in any way they want, so if they could take ten prestige, they can in fact take two fives or... Uh, they could take uh, one five and five one, so however they want, because there's going to be a blind bidding phase that's going to basically try and manipulate what you, your opponents think you're going to be having face down. It's an interesting little uh, little aspect to the game. After everybody gets their prestige at the same time, everybody's going to uh, case the joint. Let's go ahead and figure out what the artifact is uh, available that we're going to try and steal. Here is one, a Dwarven Chisel. It's going to have a value of a thousand, and it's going to have a prestige value of two, and it's going to have a heat value of one, which is pretty low, actually. Then every single player is going to get a chance um, to bid or draw. So this player can choose to either bid on the card here or draw a card from the Thieves' hand or Thieves' Horde, I should say, sorry. In which case, he's going to go ahead and say, I'm going to go ahead and bid. So he's going to hide his cards here. And she says, okay, I can go ahead and bid as well. They're going to pick the cards they want under the table, however they want to do it. Then they're going to go ahead and set their uh, hand on top of the cards they choose to bid for, just like this. So they're going to both set their cards. And then they're going to flip. He's got two, and she put down four. These are all going to go here. Keep all the rest that you didn't spend. And uh, she, he's going to go ahead and, sorry, yeah, he's going to go ahead and take this artifact. Now he's got one more on his heat level it goes up for the heat value he's going to go ahead and also have an extra two prestige every turn and he's going to have a total of three thousand dollars and of course you need a total of ten thousand to win the game at the end of the round uh, and then after that phase, you're going to go to the lead thief phase, which is just this uh, player here, Sel Selena. And she's going to have an opportunity to do a thieving battle. So she could choose to try and thieve one of the ar these artifacts. So uh, the Dwarven Chisel, perhaps. To do a thieving battle, you're going to go ahead and simply 
pay the cost of the prestige value to attempt to do it and discarding these the, 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 the prestige value. And then you're going to go ahead and flip one of these cards from the Thieves' Hoard. And uh, the other player will do the same, the player that owns the artifact. If it's a tie, you can go ahead and go again. And in this case, it's a four and a three, so she's going to actually win. And when she wins, she is going to go ahead and take uh, whatever one of these she picked. Maybe she might pick this one because it's a better value. No, she put down two, so she gets this one. Um, and not only that, but she's going to go up heat value uh, half of the heat score. And if, if it, it's rounded up, so in this case, she's going to go up one. But she gained the chisel. Pretty useful, right? Uh, and that's basically how that goes. You're going to be just flipping over cards from here, and the player who has the highest number on the bottom right will get to steal that card. If this player were to have won, he would have actually gained prestige and not lost his artifact. Then she can choose, if she wants, to try and buy thieving, uh, Thieves' Horde cards. She can buy up to three of them, and it's going to cost her three prestige each, in which case she doesn't have enough prestige, so she's not going to be able to buy anything. But if she did, she could buy up to three of these for a total of nine if she wanted to. In which case, this is going to pass, and after it passed, if anybody had 10,000, the game would be over, and the player with 10,000 is the winner. If not, it just continues going on as such. Another one of these, uh, oh, everybody's going to get their prestige value. He's going to go ahead and just get his three. She sneakily acquired the werewolf, uh, the dwarven chisel, so she's gonna actually get five this round. And uh, and then a new artifact is gonna be flopped over, and the bidding phase will go again. This one actually is gonna be for four. It has uh, a prestige value of six, and then it has a heat value of four. And that's how the game works. Now, some interesting little aspects of the game is A, the different player cards. Uh, this one says in phase three, gain one less heat when stealing from the museum. So if she would have stolen that card from the museum, she wouldn't have gained. Um, one heat, I guess she would have gained nothing. And in this case here, uh, it says phase three. If you choose to draw a thief card instead of bidding, then you get to draw two cards and choose one of them. That's pretty useful. And not only that, but there's a bunch of different cards and different abilities. This is a plus one that you can play when you're doing a thief, thief from another, when you're thieving from another player. This gives you a plus one on this value. So if your card happened to be this one and you played this card from your hand, that would make that a five. More likely winning uh, against the other player. There's wishing wands that let you choose from one of the following, a very powerful card. There's steel, steel attachments. There's attachments you can play on your artifacts as well, like giving it a plus 1000 value that can help you win the game, or a secret stash you can attach to it. There's also minus 1000 attachments, and every artifact can only have one attachment on it at any given time. So if you have more than one, no other player can put another attachment on it, but they can still be stolen from. And that is pretty much it. Eventually somebody's gonna end up having a 10,000 points in front of them and the thieves uh, lead thief token will pass to the next player and that player is going to be the winner of the game of Thieves Horde. All right, let's come up and talk about it. All right, so caveats to the game Thieves Horde. And the first one is there's a ton of different characters in the game or aliases. You're going to have uh, Thomas Ian Muldoon or Thomas uh, face for you if you successfully steal from another thief, gain the prestige uh, that you spent, which is pretty useful. Uh, Sasha Hale, you got Mouse, you got Adrian Colt, Beatrice, and Bearclaw Nate Savage. This guy has uh, phase five thief cards, costs one less prestige to buy when you're the, the lead thief, as opposed to spending three, four, it only costs two. All of them have their own unique abilities with their own different aspects in the game that they're going to have some kind of bonus for, whether it be the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth phase. And that's the idea of the game for the most part. There's a couple cool little Thief Horde cards that I explained before, like attachments. Uh, there's It's a fake, target an artifact in an, in an opponent's horde and make them discard it, which can be very, very devastating. Stealing an artifact, uh, Kleptomania, play any time to attempt to steal an opponent. Declare an artifact to steal and pay the prestige, and then do a thieving battle, just like you normally would if you were the lead thief. This gives you that ability at the end of the game, which is a nice way to sneakily win. Rat them out, target a thief, add two to their heat score. Uh, when somebody goes above 10 heat, they're going to basically bust. And that'll happen as they gather more and more artifacts from the game, whether it be stolen from their players or simply bid it on and won from the, the uh, museum and artifacts deck. And how that works is pretty simple. When you get to 10, you now have to discard all of your heat. Uh, sorry, your prestige. Um, if you cannot or do not want to discard, you are going to instantly uh, go down to one heat and lose all of the artifacts in front of you. If you do, you discard all of them, and then uh, based on the amount of prestige you've discarded, you're going to move your heat up. So if you had 10 and then you had five prestige, you spend the five, you move it up five. So you've lost the prestige. So you always want to be not arrested. You got to be paying off those, those, th those coppers. So you're always going to be doing bribes throughout the game. Uh, so there's going to be different ways in which you're going to want to do that. But anyway, 
that's the basic caveat. So let's talk about the game. Now, this game is a fun little bidding game. I like the aspect of ones, fives, and tens, and how you gather them throughout the game. Obviously, there's a snowballing effect for everybody. There's gonna be more and more artifacts that come into play. They're not gonna like disappear unless you play a card on them. And as that happens, more prestige is given out. And sometimes you're gonna play just one card uh, from your hand, or you can play four cards, but you don't know if it's a five or a one or a ten, or if they played four cards in that stack. All you know is they got their hand on, on top of a bunch of cards. Maybe it's like seven ones, and there you are with your two fives, and you're like, I don't know if this will win or not. And so you're going back and forth with that. It's a bidding style game and it works really well in that aspect. The next portion of the game is where it gets into the main thief in which he can try and flip over cards from the thief's hoard. This one is one of those more random chance aspects in the game and uh, for a lot of those bidding auctioneer people, probably not gonna like it as much, I would say, just because you never know what's gonna happen in this aspect. If you can avoid it from happening to you, you're gonna get some prestige, it's gonna be nice, but if you get stolen from you, just on a random coincidence, it can be perturbing, I suppose. If you don't mind that aspect of the game though, otherwise I really, really enjoyed this one here. Uh, the different cards in this deck are also cool. The fact that you can buy them as the lead thief and you can get up to three of them and utilize them. They all have pretty useful powers. None of them are too broken or too overpowered, but they all are very, very good. You're always going to want to decide when you want to keep them, when you want to ditch them. The fact that you can go up in heat is cool as well. It slows the players who are going too fast down a little bit, gives everybody else a chance to catch up, which is a nice catch-up mechanic. Mechanic. All the characters are unique and interesting in their own way. I like some better than others, but that's just based on the way I play the game specifically. Also, I like the fact that you have a bunch of the museum and artifact cards here, and they're all different as far as I could tell. They all have different like colors and whatnot on them. And uh, they also, the Pinkertons too. All thieves discard up to five prestige. So there's different events that can pop up throughout the game. And you gotta be careful when you've got the Pinkertons on your, on your butt because they're gonna make you pay, especially if you go over that 10 heat ratio. But uh, all of them, even though they're just basically gonna have the numbers and the heat and the prestige value, they still have their own unique different flavor text on them, Beowulf's armor, and the different artwork as well. The artwork is fine. Uh, it's not like overly impressive in my opinion, but it's also good for what the game is. The theme feels realistic to a thieving game, so you don't just feel like it's a bidding game. It feels more like you're I am much better thief than you and I deserve to steal this. Look at how powerful I am. And everybody else is like, wow, you're much more powerful than I am. You can go out and steal that thing. In which case you're going to gain all the benefits and the, uh, not the negative effects of getting artifact cards. And then they can choose to screw you over at some other point in the game. There's a little bit of take that in that, this game as well. So it's not just a straight up bidding game. It has a lot of different little aspects to it. Uh, definitely interesting game. Uh, we had a really good time playing this game. Two gamers that had actually not played a lot of board games previously we were the first people I played this game with and they really, really enjoyed themselves. Had that like, they're like, oh, it, it's, it's a better version of this game and this game and this game and this game, but they're all put together. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of what it is, right? I really like the bidding aspect of this game. It's fun, it's enjoyable. Something you should check out if you like, if you don't mind the randomness of the flipping over the Thieves' Horde card during the thievery, and you don't mind the um, fact that the artifacts are gonna have different values, I guess, uh, that you may, or, and, uh, what, what is it, the, 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 sorry, the Thieves' Horde cards may or may not make you lose certain things, or the Pinkerton cards can affect you in certain ways. Well, the take that aspect is what I'm trying to say. You'll enjoy this game, Thieves' Horde. All right, let's come up and uh, outro. Thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer card game review. If you like this game, check out the rest of our videos here on YouTube. Like, subscribe, and comment. Hit that little notification bell button right there next to the subscribe button. It definitely does help. We do greatly appreciate it. As well as take a look at Thieves' Horde, a game about outsmarting, outwitting, and of course, out thieving your opponents. Has enough players to where you can have a good party of thievery. It's a mean little game, but mean is sometimes fun, right? As well as checking our friends, everythingboardgames.com and the Giveaway Geek, and my site, unfilteredgamer.com. Tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. They all have that, and so do mine. Give away the guy game Dogs currently. And I'm excited to uh, show you more games in the future here. You're gonna be excited. We got some really cool titles coming up. If you like this one, you're gonna like a lot more titles we got. All right, I'm burnt out. I'm tired. It's been a long day. I'll see you next time.